Okay, so, uh, wow, Sarah, we get to follow that. And uh, we get to sit back and talk about how you, more importantly, are making an impact on this world. And the evening thus far has been filled with just such great stories and examples of individuals that are making a difference. And thank you for all you do. So Mark introduced Sarah a little earlier and gave you a tidbit of who she is. So I, I get to sit back and amplify your voice tonight, OK? So first off, I'm Calvin Butler, and I have the privilege of being a vice chair of IIE. And I have the privilege of having this conversation with uh, Sarah Wahidi tonight, our co mc So let me tell you a little bit about her. While living in Kabul in 2020, Sarah founded the startup Itazab, which built an app that tracks public safety information in Kabul. The app, which has since been profiled by news outlets from Time Magazine to Fast Company and CNN, gives Kabul 4 million residents reliable, real-time information about nearby events, including gunfire, explosions, and power outages. We now know how prescient that app is. By 2021, Kabul fell to Taliban leadership and demand for the app skyrocketed. Unfortunately, it also meant severe risk for Sarah and your team, whose identities must remain anonymous for safety. You know, as Mark mentioned earlier, Sarah is an IIE, Emergency Student Grantee. For students already enrolled in a degree program, unexpected disruption can come at any time. These grants, as many of you know, are awarded to international college students in the US when natural disasters, war, or other crises in their home countries or regions threaten their education. Essential needs, including basic living expenses, can be covered. And oftentimes, these grants fill the gap that no other source of funding does, allowing students like Sarah to remain in school and continue their degree program. And I say that to say how humbled we are to have you but I would like to know, Sarah, as we are in awe of what you continue to accomplish, can you tell us, tell the audience, what inspired you to create the app? Right, thank you so much, Calvin, for this amazing introduction. It's an absolute honor. Um, so the app came from a personal experience. I was at the time living in Afghanistan in Kabul, in the downtown area. And when I was walking home from work at that time, it was May 8th, 2018. I'll never forget that day. Um, I was just a few yards from my home when um, I just heard some commotion. Um, and then I put two and two together. Uh, people were running past me. And uh, within a few seconds, there was an explosion right behind me. Uh, and that was the, the city core where there was um, restaurants and, and other stores in that area. And that area of Kabul was under lockdown for about 12 hours. And during that entire time, I was trying to find out information about what had happened. And, and it, the most frightening thing was what I, I was seeing. It was like a movie. It was just you know, a few yards away from my balcony. Uh, and to be able to see it but not understand it felt criminal to me, that there was no 911. There was no uh, uh, you know, access to information um, that wasn't politicized. So that experience really just spearheaded um, the app that, that Afghans are using today. Amazing. You know, I read that you said that you wanted to, the app to reduce the anxiety of daily life in Kabul. Describe the toll that unpredictable violence and public safety issues take on the people in Afghanistan. Right, so right now there's just no vehicle for robust, verified, timely information. It's either incredibly politicized or the majority of uh, journalists have fled um, Afghanistan and that now they're in every corner of the world but unable to uh, spread um, trustworthy information within the Afghan people. So right now to be able to have access to information which is not politicized is impossible. And although our uh, you know, the amount of Avons we're able to reach right now is very limited. What we're ensuring is that no matter what we post on our application or on our platform is trusted. And we're building that trust within the Avon citizenry that they have a fundamental right to access to information. And now 
access to information is an entrenched human right by the UN Declaration of Human Rights. And that's something that I believe shouldn't be only accessible in the US, for example, where you trust 911 or a lot of platforms, but in Afghanistan as well, that is a fundamental human right. So that's what we're trying to do at Ehtisab. I love the way you immediately put the needs of other people first and thinking about how their lives have been impacted by what's around them. And that's just made you so impactful. Can you share a little bit about how the Taliban's return affected your life? Right, so I was speaking to Shamna, my friend here, and yeah. you know, we both were dealing with our families who were stuck in Afghanistan mm -hmm. at that time and dealing with the evacuation. So personally, from my experience, um, up until three weeks ago, actually, my family was stuck. About eight members of after my immediate family were still stuck in Afghanistan who worked for the government, especially uh, U.S.-backed projects. Um, it definitely had a very uh, direct connection with the United States. And they were all in hiding. And up until three weeks ago, actually, they were in Afghanistan. But I can say now safely that they're OK. And they're now in Europe. Um, and we're so thankful and so glad that they're OK. Um, so that for the last year has been basically just, you know, eating at me yeah. is, is my family, but also my, my team. Um, they're all still there. We actually, from my team, Afghanistan's first CTO, female CTO, is an Afghan a woman. And she was working for my team and um, getting her out safely was imperative to me as well. But the rest of my team who are mainly men um, are still in Afghanistan and, and having to work under um, aliases to be safe, we had to remove their names from social media and everything. So um, it, it's definitely had a direct impact in terms of my work and my family, but also just me as, as a very proud Afghan um, to, to see Afghanistan in this, in this situation, especially when 70% of the population is under 30 and we were leading the change. It's, um, it, it's, it, it's, it feels unbelievable to be in this situation. So talk about that. You know, you, you mentioned your family and your team how do you balance that with really trying to help your country and stay in the fight and stay engaged? And I know that has to be a constant struggle with that. Talk to, tell us how you balance that. Well, I try not to um, get too emotional with my work, especially being a technologist. I think um, I'm, I'm looking for change in a, a long-term way. I'm, I'm looking 20, 30 years down the road and I'm trying not to be impulsive. And a lot of um, you know, people who, who read articles or who know about Ehtisab asking me why I don't take a more direct stance against the Taliban. It's because I truly believe that they will uh, uh, be removed from power and, and the youth will lead that, that change. And for me to politicize them or to um, become a direct uh, you go to a direct fight with them isn't a, a smart choice for me. I think that there are ways to protest and work around that and we're being very strategic with the way that we post and the way that we crowdsource our information, but we're trying to be two steps ahead of the Taliban, essentially, uh, in the way that we do our work. Well, you've heard tonight how we've had funders here at IIE be engaged with us since 1919, right? So it's a long term. I, so I love the approach. How have the opportunities that the IA community, what have they done and created for you? Well, definitely being able to focus on school and my work um, and not have to worry about how to fund a, you know, an education like Columbia is extremely helpful. I mean, it's, there are so many uh, other students who I know are struggling with that. And, and for Ehtisab, I'm basically, I finish school and I work up until two, three in the morning, basically just managing uh, the crowdsourcing and verifying reports because there are days when you know there'll be a homicide and now you have to think strategically about the way that you're posting and the way that you're verifying information. So being able to be supported in this way and being able to study and work um, uh, on Ehtisab and not have to look for you know, other forms of income is, yeah, I mean, that's the only way that I can do this work. That's wonderful. I mean, we, we talk about this Time Magazine, CNN, Fast Company. You're doing all these great things and all this acknowledgement. How do you plan to put your education to work to that, take it to that next level? Um, definitely utilizing technology uh, to, to promote civic change is always going to be m my mission. Um, I believe in leapfrogging, uh, you know, different types of, of trends that the world has gone through. If, if the United States right now is, is, is you know, leading technology in the most innovative ways, you know, Afghanistan shouldn't have to wait 100 years to catch up. And there should be ways to be able to leapfrog that utilizing the education that I have here. So definitely working in civic tech um, is going to be my, my goal. I love that. So 
We have a couple of minutes left because a very short conversation, but powerful. I'd love to hear from you. What do, what do you envision for your future? I mean, definitely um, still advocating for my country. I think this massive brain drain, which has occurred now, this is now the fourth wave of, of just crippling brain drain that's affected Afghanistan, keeping my foot in that country always will be my goal, but also spearheading initiatives like Ehtisab, where access to information is, is, I truly believe, a fundamental human right, how to be able to expand Ehtisab in other countries. And we have interest in three or four countries that have uh, reached out to us about the platform and, you know, this, this belief that those who come from lived experiences and countries like Afghanistan can build sustainable technology solutions because they come from those communities. So building things like Ehtisab um, in countries like Afghanistan will be, will be the goal. Yeah. So let me be one of the many to say thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for your leadership. And what we need to do, though, is I think Alan had walk-up music. So we, next time you're here, we're going to have some walk-up music, and we're going to have our own theme song, and we're going to figure that out, right? Yes. But at the end of the day, I just want to say thank you for all you do. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for the impact you're having, not only at your home, but in the world. And please join me in just thanking Sarah for her leadership and dedication. Thank you.